If you converted your computer power supply like this for your layout or your workbench, you're going to want to see this or if you have one of those too. So let's see what this is all about. I'm Tom Kovichak and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And some time ago we talked about taking one of these things apart and taking all the plugs off of here and dividing all these wires up into the voltages and using it as a power supply on our model railroad or on our workbench. And we also talked about this one right here, which gives you a constant voltage, but only one voltage. You can set the current on it also. Well, what can we use it for? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in this video right here and right after this. If you would like to see more videos like this on Tom's Trains and Things about model railroading, about beginners, about electronics, about just about anything, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, ding that bell so you can be notified whenever I have a new video coming out. So let's get started with this thing right here and see what we could do with these power supplies that we have where we're going to put it on our model railroad or what we're going to do with it on the workbench. The first thing you want to take note of before you do anything is check the data plate on your power supply. Now your power supply may be different than mine. Mine's a 305 watt and it was manufactured for Dell although all power supplies are made in the same place. Now this one here is 5 volt is 22 amps max. 12 volt is 18 amps max. Minus 12 volt is 1 amp max. 3.3 volt is 17 amp max. Now there's two rails in this one, a low voltage rail and a high voltage rail. So the low voltage rail is 3.3 volt and 5 volt and it says do not exceed 150 watts in there and I'll show you how to figure that out. And the 12 volt A and 12 volt B rails not to exceed 264 watts. Okay, so that's one thing that you have to take into consideration if you're using a lot of the 3 volt and the 5 volt ones. You can't exceed 150 watts on there in those two voltages. But your power supply may be different so that's why you have to check the data plate on it. That's what you have to take a look at and you could run many things on your layout and on your workbench. Now this one here it doesn't have to be this specific brand. This one goes anywhere from 0 to 30 volts at 5 amps. Now they make them up to 10 amps also but the one that I have is 5 amps and I'll show you what we could use on this one also. Figuring out the maximum wattage on your power supply is a piece of cake, or should I say a piece of pie. On my example for the Dell, we had 150 watts maximum for 3.3 and 5 volts. So with this formula here, P equal I times E, which is pi, we could transpose that and we want to figure out current. So the current which is I would be equal to P over E. So we put 150 over 3.3 and that comes out to 45 and a half amps. Now you are not going to be using that many amps on there. Now that is a lot of amps. Now figuring out for five volts is 150 over five, which is 30 amps. Now if you put those two together, you can't exceed the what, the 150 watts. So somewhere in there the maximum for the 5 volt and the maximum for the 3.3 volt is far below what the maximum is if you would use it by itself. On the 3.3 it said the maximum amperage on there was 17 amps. You're not going to be using 150 watts on there because 150 watts is all the way up to 45 and a half amps twice that. So don't even worry about it. you got plenty of power on here. Now for the 12 volts, you have 264 watts. Divide that by 12 and that comes out to 22 amps. And the maximum on the 12 volt was 18 amps. And if you wanted to use the 
the minus 12 on there, that was the maximum of one amp. So you could combine the, the, one, the minus 12 and the plus 12 to get 24 volts. Now there are some items that you can use 24 volts on, but it's only one amp. And what I'm gonna tell you right now is these Woodland Scenics Just Plug, you could run that off of the 24 volts because that is it. They wanna sell you a wall wart for $20, which is 300 milliamps at 24 volts DC. And that is plenty of power on that. You got one amp. That's more than the 300 milliamps that you need for running this right here, the just plug. So that's one thing that you could use on there. Another item that you could use if you're using Digitrax, the DS64. The DS64 is anywhere from 12 to 14 volts. So you could use you could tap in on the 12 volt one for the DS64. Now, a lot of the other items for Digitrax come with a power supply, the PS14, and that is 14 volts DC. PM42, BDL168, PR4, all of those come with a wall wart. But if that wall wart ever goes bad, boom, you could use the 12 volt off of there. Now, I... I'm going to show you how to use a voltage divider. Say you want to use nine volts off of that 12 volts, or say off of the 24 volts, you want to drop that down to 16 volts or 15 volts to replace one of the PS14s. I'm going to show you how to do a simple voltage divider. And all it requires is two resistors. And I'll bring the diagram right up here and I'll show you how to calculate that. Now, if you have any other type of DCC equipment, most of those come with the power supply. But if you want to use a command station, a lot of command stations don't come with power supplies. So this thing right here is a good candidate for that. For up to five amps now they do make like i said they do make them up to 10 amps so you're covered on here this goes up to 30 volts you could plug you you could uh dial in whatever voltage you want on there you could also dial in the maximum amperage that you want to limit this to so this is a good source for those command stations for your dcc now for all the accessories that you're using like the tortoise switch machine 12 volts will do it everything circuitron has runs from 12 to 18 volts except for the tortoise switch machine which is 12 volts now you could use that power supply here for anything that's circuitron now for dcc concepts the cobalt switch machine that's 9 to 12 volt dc for the dcc specialties Everything on that runs off of your track power, so you don't have to worry about anything on there. But let's talk about that voltage divider. On that voltage divider right there, you have two resistors, R1 and R2. And then you tap off the center. And you could also do this with a potentiometer. But anyway, R1 and R2, say you have 12 volts over here and you want to bring the output to 9 volts. You want R1, now you could change the value of this. R1 would be 1K and R2 would be 3K. And that would bring your output down to 9 volts. Pretty simple. And here's the formula for it. Piece of cake. So if you want to bring your voltage down to another voltage off of that 12 volt, 9 volt, you could do it. If you want to bring it down to 6 volts, you could do it to 6 volts. If, you, if you're using the 24 volts and you want to bring it down to 15 volts or 14 volts, you could do this also on there. Where did we get the term Watt? W-A-T-T. -T. Well, we got that from James Watt. He was an 18th century mechanical engineer. He also made improvements to the steam engine. Even James Watt, who we think of in electrical terms, had a lot to do with the steam engine that we use on the locomotives today.
Every accessory that you use on your model railroad, if it's powered with DC, you could use this power supply here from the computer, or you could use this power supply right here instead of a wall wart. If, if, it, if you have something that requires a wall wart, you could use that power supply on it and you could adjust the voltage on it to match whatever voltage you need as long as it's DC. LEDs can be powered at 3.3 volts, at 5 volts, at 12 volts. There's even some that are on 24 volts, like the Woodland Scenics Just Plug. Coming up in some videos later on, we're going to be doing things on an Arduino. And right here, this is 9 volts. On the USB, USB is typically 5 volts. And they also have pins on the side for 3.3 volts and 5 volts right over here. Now, I have one that I bought about four years ago. It was manufactured by Make. Instead of the 18 Mega 328 chip that's normally in there, it's got an SMD chip in there, similar to that. And in some future videos, these right here are AT Mega 328s for the Arduino, and I'm going to show you how to make your own Arduino board. Keep an eye out for that. That's coming up in March because I just got all the stuff here from SparkFun that I've been waiting for for a couple of weeks. I got everything in this little red box here that we need to make our own Arduinos for our projects. We're gonna do it with this, and we're gonna make our own one and do it with that so we could store it anywhere we want on our layout in a smaller package to this. Now granted, you could get the, the Arduino minis and do the same thing, but with this, it only costs about $5 to make an Arduino, so. And it's more fun too. All right, keep an eye out for the Arduino projects coming up in March. We got a resistance substitution box so we could do some projects with the Arduino and other electrical projects on our railroad. So we'll see you.